Welcome to the Getting Started with WebBlocker video tutorial. During this brief video, I'll define WebBlocker, show you how WebBlocker and WatchGuard Dimension work together, and explain how to set up and use WebBlocker. WatchGuard works closely with our best of breed strategic partner, WebSense, to offer WebBlocker, a subscription based, integrated content filtering service. With WebBlocker, your Firebox or XTM device can seamlessly block access to undesirable websites and help you avoid data security breaches. In addition, you can improve productivity, secure internet surfing, and tie it all together with WatchGuard Dimension for robust reporting. If you give your network users unlimited internet access, your company can suffer lost productivity and reduced bandwidth not to mention increased security risks and legal liability. WebBlocker uses a database of website addresses that are identified by content categories. When a network user tries to connect to a website, your Firebox or XTM device examines the WebBlocker database. If the website is in the WebBlocker database and the administrator has blocked the content category of the site, the network user is denied access and sees a customized message to let them know. WebBlocker and WatchGuard Dimension work together to provide data visibility. You can set up WebBlocker to report on web category use before you block any content. Then, you can look at the data in Dimension to decide which categories of web content you want to block for your company. In Dimension, you can see the top URL categories accessed by network users. This is great information for spotting trends and identifying categories you might want to block using WebBlocker. You can also drill down into the data for more information and more specific views of your network activity. Understanding web activity is vital to forming your company's computer use policies and network security protocols. Before WebBlocker can protect your network and data, you need to set up WebBlocker so it knows exactly what traffic to allow and what traffic to deny. To configure WebBlocker, Open Policy Manager, and then navigate to the Activate WebBlocker wizard, like this. WebBlocker works with the HTTP and HTTPS proxy policies to control web browsing. If you have not configured an HTTP or HTTPS proxy, an HTTP proxy is automatically configured and enabled for you when you enable WebBlocker. As you can see here, I already have the HTTP proxy and WebBlocker is not enabled for my HTTP proxy or HTTPS proxy. When you configure WebBlocker, you have two options for the type of WebBlocker database your device uses to control access to web content. The first option is WebSense Cloud with WebSense Categories, which is a URL categorization database with over 125 categories. The second legacy option is WebBlocker Server with Surf Control Categories, which uses a URL categorization database with 54 categories provided by Surf Control. For this video, I'll use the first option, WebSense Cloud with WebSense Categories, and we recommend you do the same. For more information about these two options, see the WatchGuard System Manager help. As I mentioned before, it's a good idea to set up WebBlocker to report on web category use before you use it to block any content, so you can review the data in Dimension and then create a plan before blocking any categories. If you want to block a particular website and you're not sure which category it belongs in, you can open a web browser, navigate to the WatchGuard security portal, select the WebBlocker database you chose when you configured WebBlocker, and type the URL of the website. After you click Search, you'll be able to see which category the website belongs to. For this demonstration, I'll keep things simple and will block all adult material. As you can see, there are subcategories you can use to fine-tune what you want to block. Because I chose to block the adult material category, the subcategories are automatically selected. If I only wanted to block a few of these categories, I could have done that as well. As you can see here, WebBlocker is now enabled for the HTTP proxy and the HTTPS proxy. To have these changes take effect, I still need to save the configuration file, 
But before I do that, I want to show you a powerful advanced setting you might want to consider. Many organizations want to allow different levels of web access for different groups of users. For example, if you are a network administrator for a school, you might want to grant yourself unrestricted access, moderately restrict the teacher's access, and highly restrict the student's access. Students and teachers would have separate web blocker actions for their web browsing, and you could use a password override for unrestricted access. I'll show you how to set up a password override in just a moment. For information about creating web blocker actions for different user groups, see the WatchGuard System Manager help. The first thing to do when creating the override password is to open the Configure Web Blocker window, like this. When you get to this window, make sure the proxy policy you want to configure is selected. I want to apply the override passphrase to the HTTP proxy policy, which is already selected, so I can go ahead and click the Configure button. Once this window opens, click the Advanced tab. Click here and type the override passphrase. This is the passphrase users must enter to override the web blocker restrictions that are applied to your network. Type the passphrase one more time. Use this field to set the inactivity timeout limit for the bypass. I'll leave it at 5 minutes, but you can increase or decrease the limit based on your specific needs. The last thing to do is save the configuration file to the device, like this. Once the configuration file is saved to the device, any users you give this passphrase to can override the web blocker restrictions. If you want to personalize your company's proxy deny message with specific wording, a URL or email address that can provide more information, or a company logo, you can easily do so in Policy Manager. To personalize your company's deny message, open the policy associated with Web Blocker. In this case, it is the HTTP proxy policy. To edit the deny message, I need to click here, and then select the Deny Message menu option, here. As you can see, the deny message is HTML code that you can change to fit your company's needs. Let's say I want to give users who see the proxy deny message an option to email a network administrator with any questions about their experience. All I have to do is find the deny message in the HTML code, here, and type the email address I want to display when users attempt to go to block sites. For this demonstration, I'll have users contact IT underscore department at company.com if they have any questions. And of course, before this change to the deny message can take effect, I need to save the configuration file to the device. Now that Web Blocker is set up to prevent users from visiting adult websites, let's see it in action. This URL is great for making sure your security services are doing exactly what you expect. To save you from watching me type the URL, I'll go ahead and copy and paste it into the address field. Because this is a test link, don't worry. It won't harm your network or cause any embarrassment. I highly recommend bookmarking this URL so you can use it once you have Web Blocker set up and ready for testing. When you see this deny message, you'll know that Web Blocker is working for you. To learn more about WebBlocker, visit the WatchGuard website.